Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it's crazy hair Saturday. Ooh, sorry, I'm hitting some bumps. I am headed into my work for a little OT this morning. But first, I'm almost done with my morning coffee, so I need to stop and get a cup of coffee to take to work with me because they don't. It's Saturday, so nothing is open like cafe or Starbucks in my work. So you gotta bring your own, which is fine. I like Dunkin' Donuts, which is around the corner. So I thought I would start a vlog today. We've got a lot on our plate. I need to, while I'm on this side of town, I need to work and then I'm gonna hit Costco for some sugar because I'm out of my coffee sweetener and then I want to go there's a Goodwill over here I'm on the hunt for a frame to frame one of my needle points it's almost done I'll show you today although if you're interested in needle point I do have that second channel called the Cambridge way the link now is fixed and it's down below and it'll take you right to my channel that's where I talk mostly about knitting crochet uh, felting and now cross stitch. Um, chappy chap. I'm feeling much better. I'm finally getting over this cold. Oh, my alarm's going off. Cold, flu, whatever it is that I had. Never had a fever. Did go to the doctor just because this cough was starting to um, become annoying. And I wasn't sure the medicine I was taking. Sorry, my collar. <coughs> was working properly I was taking originally mucinex in the tap you know the pill the gel pills I bought the day and night pack so the day pack had a cough suppressant and an expectorant in it and then the night one just had the suppressant so you could sleep and it really wasn't I don't know if my I was just so congested it really wasn't working good but Last week, Friday, maybe Thursday, Friday, my co work when I went to the doctor, my co worker brought in Robitussin Extra Strength Cough Suppressant and Expectorant DM stuff. And I took that and it worked so much better. So I switched from the Mucinex over to the Robitussin. And that seemed to be helping a lot more. Just break up the chest congestion because I was really having a difficult time breathing there for a hot minute but I'm all better. Now it's just the residual stuffy nose, still coughing, but nothing like before. But thank you all for your kind w thoughts and prayers and wishes. And this has just been a terrible winter for me. Allergy wise, turning into icky. So I have pretty bad seasonal allergies and it's every season. Um, a lot of it is like barometric pressure. So when the rain snow is coming through, it creates a pressure which gives me a headache, my sinuses back up, things don't do what they're supposed to do. So this winter here in central Ohio has been pretty rough um, weather-wise. Lots and lots and lots of rain and fluctuating temperatures. Um, like in the 50s down to the 20s, rain, 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 a little snow, rain, rain, rain. So my head was so stuffed up. I was getting sinus infections and I got a double ear infection because it wasn't draining. I wasn't sick like with a cold, but hey, please hold. Gotta order my coffee. Yes, may I have an extra large hot coffee with cream and sugar-free hazelnut? Extra large hot coffee, cream and sugar-free hazelnut? Yes, and then um, sausage, egg, and cheese, no bread. I got you anything else for No, that's all. Thank you. Can you tell I'm here a lot? We worked out this sugar thing. Dunkin' Donuts tends to do cream and sugar. Most people do. I don't. So we had to work out the cream and sugar situation. They kept putting sugar in my coffee. I can't have that. I, I use, I'm pulling it out here. I have a baggie of it 
in my in my car. Um, the only place that I can get this is Starbucks. Oop. And it's Whole Earth, Stevia, and Erythritol. Natural. They used to have Splenda in it or Sucralose, but they took it out when you realized that that's not very natural. Um... So they took that out, but I put in my extra large, I put five of those in my coffee. Part of what I'm doing, not to sound like a alarmist or a prepper because I'm really not. However, I've decided that I'm going to stock up on things, cat food, cat litter, <laughs> my sweetener that I need make sure I have plenty of coffee creamer stocked up on toilet paper paper towels all the things I'm pretty good well stocked on but a little more so if this coronavirus ate and the flu I mean the flu is a rough threat here folks um let's avoid having to go out to stores if it's not necessary that's kind of where I'm at I'm not at the apocalypse or that um, you know, we're all going to die, whatnot, but I'm more in the line of if people start getting sick around here where I'm at, I would prefer not to go to the store and not have to go touching things that other people have touched. I don't know how long it lives on any virus lives on packaging. It, just me. So I thought, you know what? Well, let's start stocking up. And it's all things I will use anyway. I mean, instead of buying one bag of cat litter, I'll buy four. Put it in my garage. It's fine. It'll get used. I have two cats. Trust me. We never have a shortage or a need of kitty litter. Make sure I have plenty of their wet food, plenty of treats, all that. So today I'm hitting Costco. Now, I, because of my couponing, I have plenty of toilet paper and paper towels. That's not an issue. Um, and I have, like, Clorox wipes and Lysol wipes. Those kind of things I want to stock up on as well. Just to keep the surfaces clean and tidy and um, germ-free. So, there. There's my prepper scenario. Oh, and I want to stock my freezer. I need to get some hot dogs they're not really hot I mean they are hot dogs but they're not they're it's this Teton brand they sell it at Costco it's all organic 100% natural no nitrates no fillers and it's great on the go food for me and they're it's good stuff to keep in my freezer so I'm gonna buy a pack of those just a few things so I have on hand if I need plus you know I'm busy I'm busy okay I'm gonna pause you what well I guess I don't have to but I'm gonna head to work and I will talk to you in a minute Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and I got a DIY for you. And yes, I have the same shirt on. I'm doing two today. I'm making a recipe that I got from Catherine Michelle's channel here on YouTube. And I'll try to remember to link it below. Um, she does keto lifestyle videos. Um, but she made this keto recipe of like a jello jiggler type thing. And I thought that these are the perfect molds. So we've got the little bunny butts from the Dollar Tree and the bunnies. These were a dollar a piece. They're clean and ready to go. Um, the materials that you'll need is something to make your jello. And you don't have to use these molds, but that's what I'm using. Some type of a measuring vessel and one with a spout will be better. Um, you're going to need two packets of Knox like gelatin or whatever brand. And I am doing mine with sugar-free jello. I got sugar-free strawberry. That's what they had. You do not have to use strawberry and you don't have to use sugar free. These don't have to be keto, but it also calls for a half a cup of cream. I'm wondering, I'm, or I'm thinking you could just do a cup and a half of hot water if you didn't want to add the cream. But for us, for keto, the cream is a good thing. So I'm going to change direction. I turned my tea kettle on. I have boiled some water. So I'm going to fill this to the one cup line and we're going to mix this up and I'll show you how I do it. We've got our cup of boiling water. We're gonna add two packets of this. I need to figure out how to make it with Zevia soda, but for now I'll use this Jello. So we add that in. And I'm gonna do a quick, you just really wanna make sure everything dissolves. 
And then we're gonna add the gelatin and the strawberry. And they have at the, I was at Target, but at the grocery store, they have plenty of um, sugar-free. So let's get this all, it's gotta dissolve. So it's gonna take a minute. Okay, got everybody dissolved. Now we're slowly gonna add a half a cup of cold cream. This is heavy whipping cream. Um, like I said, I bet you could make it if you didn't wanna do keto, um, a cup and a half of the hot water or a cup of hot water, half a cup of cold. You could add milk. Now these would have to be refrigerated, which I feel like Jello needs to be anyway. There we go. Got it all mixed up. So now it's like a Pepto, Bismol. But everything is nice and ready. Now what we're gonna do, pour it into these. I don't know how many I'm gonna need, which is why I got four of them. So we'll start um, with one of each and then we'll see how much we need and then I'll know. Okay, so let's get you out of here and we're going to fill these little cup molds, these little molds up and then they go in the refrigerator for a couple hours and firm up and then we'll pull them out. Hers look much more, I mean, I know her recipe said half a cup, but hers were white, but maybe, I want some butts. So we're gonna go over here and do some butts. Okay, that recipe that I just made filled up exactly, oops, sorry, there we go, filled up exactly two from the Dollar Tree. So if you want to do this recipe that I'm doing, you would just need two. I'm going to put them in the fridge for a couple hours and I will show you when they're done. Okay, they're done. Now what I'm finding is they're coming out perfectly fine except for maybe a little stuck. So for the bunny one, I'm gonna sit it right here for a second. In a, the pan, I just put some hot tap water. And let's see if that will help me get it out a little better. And it could just be too that this mold, that's better. This mold here um, is pretty detailed, but I did try them and they are delicious. 
So let's see if I cannot just get you pushed out. There we go. Yeah, little pieces are stuck. But guys, look at these. They're a little jealousy See, like that one broke. Oh, but let's see how the butts do. I haven't tried taking the butts out yet. Which might be easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, guys, look at that. You got the cream at the bottom. It's a little jello butt. Guys, these are adorable. And they are delicious. I will say, you don't have to do the sugar-free. You may get a little more um, yield. I think there's more volume. In the regular gelatin. You know, I mean, there's going to be more sugar. So volume wise, but oh, these are adorable. So it's a win. And I cannot wait to pack these in my lunch this week. You know, I would say if you use a higher quality silicone mold, you're going to get that quality, uh, you know, different. But if you're easy and gentle with taking it out, they are adorable. I hope you enjoy and you make some for yourself or your kids. Have a good one. Okay, I just got out of a Volunteers of America. Oh, it's windy today. <coughs> Sorry, I went in looking for frame for my cross stitch. I didn't find that, but I did find bags of goodies. This is so funny because whoever was cross stitching this literally stopped mid project. I picked this up mainly for the hoop and I'll go through the whole bags on my floss tube channel because I don't want to bore all the people. But there in this one there's it looks like a really nice wooden hoop. Um, just some floss, some Christmas something, some 14 count Ada, a crochet hook, and some pattern stuff. Looks like, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it might be a Christmas project. This was two dollars and ninety two cents, but the hoop is worth it to me for that. Then I found this bag of goodness no idea what's in here other than another wooden hoop this is on 14 ada the colors are really pretty but i saw three spools of this krynik and it's um this is three dollars and something a, a spool i paid there's that white one there was a gold one in here somewhere floating around and then a oh look at that one a rainbow and it's glitter rainbow sparkly plus all the skeins of yarn and then there's a or floss and there's a bunch of patterns some ada uh, looks like maybe some linen i don't know we'll see oh there's the gold there's gold down here so those three alone value is nine dollars which i will use all three of those if there's not more and this was five dollars and 95 cents for that so and then I rounded up to help a veteran so it was ten dollars all together which I didn't think was too bad and I will use all this most of this stuff but when I get home I'm gonna sort through it and see what we got I didn't find the frame I was looking for looking I, don't, I haven't decided the cat's not done so I'm in no hurry but I just wanted to start looking it's got to be oval or round, probably oval, uh, because I want it to go in my room and all the, I have all the round pictures in my room, so I want round. <coughs> so yeah, I'm looking for an old fashioned frame. It doesn't even have to have glass in it, but we'll see what I come up with. All right, now I'm headed to the Dollar Tree and then home. It's four o'clock. All right, we'll be back getting some gas. Who knew gas was $1.95 a gallon? I sure did not. 
But that's what it's telling me. Woohoo! I'm excited. All right, getting gas. Going to the Dollar Tree and Target. I'll have a Target haul this week for springy stuff and a Dollar Tree haul and a DIY with some Dollar Tree stuff and another DIY. I know, crazy, huh? So I gotta fill my tank for the week. It's Sunday. We're gonna make, I think, chicken, like shredded chicken Mexican style. You put salsa and cream cheese on chicken and I'm gonna serve it over rice. So I'm gonna get some of that at Aldi, throw it in the crock pot. I will bring you along. All right, well, my lunch plan didn't pan out. I forgot um, to pick up cream cheese, which is fine. And um, they didn't have rice cauliflower. So what I'm gonna make is just some baked chicken thighs with, I'm gonna marinate them in the rest of this dressing that I have that I needed to use up. And then um, I'm gonna make some broccoli with, uh, butter just some buttered broccoli just a basic lunch this week there'll be a lot of chicken thighs however I think these were pre-frozen so what i'm going to do is marinate them for quite a while and then tonight they only take about a half an hour to cook really in the oven at 350. so what i'll do is marinate them all day make sure they pick up some flavor i prefer to do this overnight but five, six hours will be fine. And then um, I'll just bake them. Have a couple of chicken thighs and some broccoli for lunch. And then any extra, I'll just freeze for future lunch. So I just put all my, these are boneless skinless. They were just easier today. And then um, this is Italian from Olive Garden. Somebody had given it to me. It's good. It does have some sugar in it, so I try not to eat it too much. But I feel like whatever it gets marinated in here, I'm just kind of massage it up. Let it pick up some flavor. I'm going to leave it on the counter for a little bit because it is... Well, actually, no. I'll put it in the fridge for now, and then before I bake it, I'll... Um... Put it in the counter now when i put things like this in my fridge i just stick it in a bowl so it doesn't pop open or leak in my refrigerator and that's how i keep it clean so this will just get baked on a plate or on a pan 350 you know for about a half an hour and that'll be done and then i'll cook up the broccoli and season that up probably with like some butter stuff like that yeah, so now I'm getting ready to go film a Dollar Tree haul.